<laughs> I will say that out of the 35 organizations, um, several of the committee members were either low-income residents or, or advocates or activists working on issues relating to um, uh, low-income issues and poverty. Uh, but we can you know, continue to, to work to extend that, perhaps an advisory committee solely on low-income residents to help uh, round out some of that representation and to work with the low-income caucus for lack of a, a better term on, on the committee. Um, it, this is a process, and, and we can always improve it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Well, time. Thank you, Councillor Deal. Um, other questions from councillors? Oh, okay, I did have some, so I'm going to turn myself on there. Um, questions? Um, welfare raise. Somebody noted that it had, so council has a long standing policy of supporting significant increases to welfare rates, so I'm curious as to why that didn't come forward as a reaffirmation to this report. Directed towards me, Madam Chair. Either one of you would be great. Uh, in, in the strategy, it, it um, I think very clearly lays out that we need to connect both um, the work around community economic development to the work on advocacy, because um, poverty alone will not be addressed by jobs and, and entrepreneurship in the downtown east side. There are simply um, too many residents that have. Um, uh, a range of different barriers that will uh, prohibit them from generating income to the degree that they will need to be able to afford to buy food in those local retail shops, as, as Ms. Walston pointed out. And so the advocacy piece, connecting that and connecting that to the table, the poverty reduction table, is an important part of what makes this strategy different than previous strategies as well, by acknowledging that and, and including that piece in there. So um, I, I do think that um, I'm glad it was brought up today, and it's important to note that this, this strategy, I don't think anyone has envisioned this as a cure-all for the downtown east side. Uh, it's an important piece of the puzzle, and it connects to that advocacy piece, which is absolutely crucial. Okay, uh, sorry, things are flashing on and off over here. Um, second question was around, I think it relates a bit to the exchange between Councillor Di Genova and Ms. Wallstrom, um, related to the it's really like this triangulation of is it zoning, is it incentives, is it like what tools, it sounds like everyone has agreement, the report speaks extensively to it, I know that CCAPs, um, this has been a long standing issue for them around preserving the kind of retail environment that the residents, particularly the low income residents, need to be able to survive. Um, so what, what can we um. do as a city and how does this report speak to that? The, the two pieces in there, um, most immediately, one of the RFPs or RFQs, uh, we've asked to help further explore how we can align the types of incentives that the city um, uh, can put in place um, with our social impact assessment goals, with the healthy city strategy goals, with the reconciliation goals we have, uh, and as well as the downtown east side plan. Um, so trying to bridge that connection between the local economy and, and the social uh, outcomes that are desired in these policy documents. And so we need a bit of help to, to try and make that link. Uh, and so part of phase two is doing some of that research about how we how we connect the tools that we can use under in the context of the charter uh, around economic revitalization with the, the goals and strategies we've set out in our in our Healthy City Strategy and these other documents. So that's an important piece of, of trying to, to make that connection. And then once again, the, the social purpose real estate collaboration, getting back to one of the earlier questions about the tools that we have or subsidies or, or exemptions that have been mentioned. None of those uh, are explicitly laid out in the strategy. There's nothing about exemptions per se, but the uh, cross-subsidization model that that um, CIRES, the Community Impact Real Estate Society, um, allows us to engage in um, as, a, as a partner in that nonprofit uh, effectively is able to um, to do things that we can't otherwise do through policy. So that's a programming response to the retail gentrification, where the yuppie coffee shops, as we've heard earlier, uh, can actually um, you know uh, pay the rent in a in a in a property that's charging them 40, 50, 60 bucks a square foot, whatever it might be, and the profit from that can subsidize the low income serving grocery store or the low income arts space or the low income diner or whatever it might be. And so that to me is a, a tremendous opportunity for the city to continue building on. That's great. All right, well that's it for my questions. Um, I'm just gonna move us to the main queue here. Seeing no other questions, uh, and put myself on to move this one. 
Okay, um, so I am very pleased to be moving um, recommendations A, B, and C from the staff report. Um, it's a bit of a challenge. I mean, I feel very excited about this because it's the outcome um, from the downtown East Side Local Area Plan. It was the first plan that we formally included the concept of economic planning in. What we learned is that wanting to do that um, and being able to do it at the same level that we do urban planning, social planning, transportation planning, all these other things that we've done for many years, uh, it did two different things. So this is the step to sort of beef it up to the level that um, we might have hoped that it was in the plan. Um, but it's nowhere near the end, and that's sort of my, um, I'm very excited, but I'm excited for what can be as a result of the decision today, as opposed to what will be. So it does speak a lot, I think several of the speakers spoke to um, the follow through and how important that is. And really mindful of the Vancouver Agreement, I look at all the agencies, Potluck, for example, some of, the, some of the agencies here today did not exist prior to the Vancouver Agreement. That was that first wave of economic planning in the downtown east side. Um, but because that approach was about what governments thought might work as opposed to what community knows needs to be there in order for the community to work, um, it just it could not sustain itself in the way that it needed to. The things that made sense sustained themselves, um, and the things that didn't um, went by the wayside, including the agreement itself. Um, so it's, it's not perfect. It's not the whole community. It's 35 people at a table. I think they've done an incredible job. It was really good to hear from Ms. Bird and others how people have um, really deepen their relationships and really learn to hear each other um, and find ways to accommodate the things that they're hearing at the table because I think ultimately if we could find a way for all 20,000 people living in the downtown east side to do that and the rest of the community to hear them, um, that would be the answer to supporting the community and supporting itself. I think I think the concept of embrace and extend is such a critical one for this so that the I guess what I would invite Council today to, to see is that by approving these three recommendations, um, that's, that's a commitment to following this work through, that it's not just about the vote that we have today, but about the results of the kind of research that we just heard about, and committed to continuing to follow that through, committed to understanding. Um, Ms. Wallstrom invited some of the councillors down who might not have seen some of the changes in the community to come see them firsthand and see um, the kinds of impacts they're having on the community and how we you know, really push ourselves, the answers around whether it's incentives or sticks or carrots or all these things, um, we're really blazing some pretty new territory here. Um, and I think the more connected we are, the more we're listening, the more we're hearing each other, the better chance we have to move it forward. So thank you to everyone who's been doing that. And I hope to see support for this so that we can move forward on the next steps. How's the deal? Yeah, you've spoken very eloquently, Chair Reiner. Um, I just have a few things to add. I'm very vigorously in support of this. As someone who's been liaison to the BIAs, I know that they've been looking at ways to support small independent businesses throughout the city. And here's a model that supports not only the small businesses, the independent businesses, but also takes a whole community approach to that. Uh, also, with people involved in the arts and culture um, sector, another area where we have such a wealth, a wealth. Of, of, of artistic talent in the downtown east side with any way we can find to support that, but also make it a form of, of uh, livelihood as well as a form of, of expressing oneself, I think is super important. And I guess the last thing I'll say is that, I, I mentioned earlier in my comments, when I see people who are doing so many creative things with so few resources from the traditional sense, um, I see someone who is, 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 is very resourceful, is very creative, is very thoughtful, and has a lot to offer us all in learning to to um, to make our way through this world. So I think that's a that's a, a piece of creativity and thoughtfulness and resourcefulness that we can all tap into. I think processes like this help us to learn from each other that way. So I want to thank everybody who came out, the entire committee. And I really want to thank our staff as well. I know they're not all here sitting behind you anymore, but uh, it's a great team. And um, and I, as we've all said, we can always do more. I think we've made a tremendous step here, and we very much look forward to seeing where it goes from here. Thank you, Councilor Deal. Councilor Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to add my words of thanks. Um, this, of course, is an ongoing <coughs> issue, problem, opportunity uh, in our city. That, uh, the work that's been done that's come before this. I think it provides some guidance for us. I think what it means for, for me is that uh, as we pass this, as was said, don't just 
pass something and receive it, and we need to take some action for that. This is about uh, us redoubling some of our efforts to ensure that we put the proper efforts in place. But when we um, support so many different community groups in a number of different ways, right? community grants that I was quite proud of that we added a million dollars extra on community grants that support the community. I think that went a long way, but this, this is a small drop in the bucket in what is necessary for us to collectively put together to um, help uh, many people have the opportunities that the rest of us uh, take for granted, I think. And so this is uh, something that I hope that we keep in the, not in the back of, of our minds, um, as we do the rest of our work, but rather this becomes uh, the rest of much of the work that we do here at the city and uh, to help lead the way for others to, to follow um, whenever, whenever we can. I do want to thank the community for coming out and speaking, um, making a compelling case for this. I hope that uh, we do get the necessary votes. We've got eight votes for the council to have eight votes here. And so um, if, we, uh, if we can, we will move this forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Councillor Bolt. Yes, thank you. I'd like to thank everybody for coming forward today. So many spoke in such an inspiring way. And uh, it is quite wonderful, actually, to hear the determination for change and the positive. Very, very positive aspects that we've heard today. So, uh, as I said earlier, I'd be happy to vote for this twice, but that needs to be enough to say. And that may solve our need for eight votes, Councillor Baldwin. <laughs> you only get one vote. <laughs> so that's it for uh, speakers to the motion. I'm going to leave us to the voting queue, even though I'm not supposed to do that. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry to the clerk. Uh, so if everyone could place their vote. Councillor Stevenson, did you want to vote? There we go. Okay, we have unanimous approval, so the motion passes. Thank you very much to staff and all the speakers. And all. We'll see you again, it sounds like, in the not-too-distant future. Okay, so that brings us to item four. <laughs>